Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Gaurav Jain, and uh, in this quick video, I would like to explain how Salesforce uses workflow rules to send outbound messages. Is to keep two systems in sync, or to send the data from one system to another for any business case, either to keep them sync or uh, uh, your company want to keep the two systems exactly same till the time they completely switch over to uh, Salesforce. They have recently started using Salesforce. That's why. So there can be multiple possible reasons. So how to configure outbound messages, number one. So here on my on my screen, you can see that I am logging into my Salesforce org. Now, how to configure outbound messages? Uh, again, you need to first go in the setup and in the quick find, you will go to find workflow rules. So here you will find workflow rules. Here you'll send, you'll see the list of workflow rule, which is already created in your org. You want to create a new rule. So when you want to create a new rule, so first you need to see that uh, um, these are the object, sorry, uh, I'm just taking one step back. Just for this demo purpose, I have already created a test uh, on the account. This I want to deactivate first, just for demo purpose, though it is not needed, but I'm creating almost similar, so I have just deactivated that rule. Now, in the first screen, you will see that on which object you want to create your workflow rule. So you'll see all those objects here. Just for demo purpose, I want to create, as I was explaining to you, that I want to create an object uh, account. I want to create a workflow rule, outbound message on object account. Okay, so select that object account, next. Basic configuration on the next screen, uh, that you want to provide the URL name, you may want to provide the description, which is not mandatory, but it is good practice to uh, provide your description. So for example, in rule name, I would like to say demo account outbound. Of course, you will provide your own name, whatever you want to. Evaluation criteria created, created and every time it is edited, created and any time it is edited to subsequently meet criteria. Self-explanatory as I was explaining to you in the beginning of this. So for this, I have created, submit, selected, created, let's say. Okay, now when is the criteria? So here till here, the point number one is the basic, the your rule name, when you want to evaluate this criteria, meaning whenever the rule get created, evaluate this criteria. Okay, now what is the criteria? You may want to find out the difference between number two and number three, which is a very interesting um, uh, point. I would say that uh, when you want to evaluate the criteria every time when it is created, every time when it is created or edited, right? So I think the first two are very clear that whenever you are updating or only creating. So for my demo, I have chosen only creating because you don't want to send the account detail again and again. So I have chosen only created. The third one is interesting, created and any time it is edited to subsequently meet criteria. Meaning, for example, uh, let's say you have uh, uh, just a common example, you have three, fields in your object, uh, let's say account name, account address, uh, 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 and the third one is account number, okay? Now, every time whenever you are changing in any of the three and you have selected this, that means these criteria will get evaluated, right? Now, if the third time you are selecting created and any time it is edited to subsequently meet criteria, for example, it says you only reevaluate the criteria when the previous criteria was not meeting, right? So if let's say you have chosen anything, anything, but you your previous criteria was already meeting, then this workflow rule will not get execute, uh, will, will not execute this criteria. So I'll leave this uh, here because you may want to uh, explore these two topics uh, further. Now, my rule criteria is, just again for the demo purpose, I'm saying that account name should not equal to blank and go to the next. 
now. So I have created a rule, but now I need to provide the immediate workflow action. So here you see there are two pointers, immediate workflow action and time dependent workflow action. So again, the name uh, says that the moment your rule will get executed, you want to immediately execute this action. Now time dependent, again, you can say that, okay, not immediately, but on a certain time or after these many days from this event like that. But let's go to add workflow action. And as I was explaining to you earlier, you have new task creation, email alert, field update, outbound message. So I have chooses outbound message. To configure outbound message, you need to provide few required of values. For example, name, which is again, I will give you demo outbound. Okay unique name will auto populate description it's uh, optional but it's good that if you provide it endpoint url important point here endpoint url is where you want to send the data again where you want to send the data of course this should be a listening api somewhere that if you are sending this data somewhere this api should be present somewhere. You cannot just say that, oh, I want to send the data to google.com or I want to send the data to abc.com. This should be a valid endpoint URL, right? Now, what we'll do in this, uh, again, if, the, if let's say you are sending the data to any third party system or third party URL or third party endpoint, you will be having that third party will provide you that, that detail that this is my API, please feed the data here. Right, so that URL you will populate here. Now, for this demo purpose, since creating a totally different API is not a not a uh, scope of this video, so there are a few websites which you can use uh, for your configuration here. Like hookbin.com is one of the website which I am going to use here. One minute, my screen is so hookbin dot com this is this is this hookwin.com is a website which is i would say a friendly uh, website for developer where you can create your endpoint for this type of testing and you can pass the data and you can even monitor your data so when you log when you go to the hookwin.com it will ask to okay create your endpoint so you just click on that and it will give you a endpoint so this is your endpoint hookbin.in slash a number, which is the endpoint, which is kind of listening API. Okay, so this you will copy and here you will, you're seeing here, after making a request to the endpoint above, refresh this space to see the data. So here you will see the data which has got captured by this endpoint. So I'm just copying it and I'm going back to my outbound message and pasting this. So here, what I did is, again, uh, go to the, again, uh, to step back that in the previous screen, I have selected that what we want to do on what, when we want to execute our criteria. And here we are explaining where we need to send the data. So this is my API where I want to send the data. And here it will ask you that what you want to send here. I want to say, I want to send account number. You can choose whatever you want. And uh, let's say I also want to send account name where it is account name where it is okay yes so i want to send all these three columns so uh, id which is salesforce id I, if i don't want to send it's my choice account number and name so i have chosen these three columns and save and done when you say done the last screen it will ask you to activate this if you want to immediately start this workflow rule to execute the moment your triggering action is satisfied. So I will say activate. So my workflow rule is ready to run now. It says uh, that is a demo account outbound rule name. It is on the account object. My evaluation criteria is when the record get created. Okay, and the rule criteria is your account name should not be equal to null. Okay, and Outbound message is my immediate action. And as just now you have seen that this will send the data to my listening API. And that is it. Your account rule rule on your account object is successfully created. Now let's see what it will do. 
go to the account. Just create a demo account. Demo testing. My account number is one, two, three, four, five. Let's see and save. That's it. Go back to your request and it says refresh this page. I refresh this page and you'll see here. This is the message which I received. My account number, account Salesforce ID. My account number, one, two, three, four, five. My account name, demo testing. So it has received this. Now, one important thing which I would like to highlight here. This account, this, this, is, this is the one thing which I showed you that you have received your request. Now, so your data has got successfully sent. You can also monitor the data by in your Salesforce, where you say outbound messages, monitoring, even environment monitoring outbound messages here. Here you can monitor here. So this is right now I have sent the data as per my time zone. You can see 24th of January, I've sent this data here. Now, interesting part here, if you see here, the same data is appearing in the failure queue and next item for delivery. Things to remember here, this data as per the Salesforce is considered as failed. Meaning Salesforce is saying that I was not able to successfully deliver this data. While if I open this URL, <clears throat> I was able to see that my data is successfully reached. Then why Salesforce is saying the data is not successfully delivered? <clears throat> the reason is, which is quite interesting, Salesforce here in your, in your next item for delivery and oldest failure, you are seeing that uh, these are number of attempts, number of attempts. So Salesforce, if the item is failed, retry to send this message, retry, retry. And after certain attempts, it says, oh, I am not able to deliver it, failed. Now I can, I don't want to retry again. So the more retry it does, the interval gets delayed. But here, the interesting point is my data has got received, but Salesforce is still saying that, no, I was not able to deliver it. Now, what, why it is? Salesforce, when, whenever it is sending an outbound message, Salesforce receive a acknowledgement back from the API to whom it passes the message. If that acknowledgement is not in the particular format, if the acknowledgement is not in the format of received ACK, acknowledged, then Salesforce recognized it that it is failed. So whenever your third party is creating an API, please remember that the API should be created that Salesforce message received response should be acknowledged. Then Salesforce will understand that this message has got successfully received. Otherwise, it will show up here as an outbound message failed. But of course, as I said, that API, this hookbin.com we have used for our demo purpose. We have no control to change the body of response. So we'll pause here because this is just a trial um, a website which we have used. You can use some other websites also, hookbin.com, requestbin.com. Most of the website do not provide the acknowledgement back but few like uh, Salesforce has their own um, uh, uh, testing tool, for example, Heroku app, uh, which you can use and uh, that provides your acknowledgement, successful acknowledgement back to Salesforce. So that's it for this video and I hope uh, that you liked it. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Bye.